Hello and welcome back to Lorbeck Luxury Cars. I'm your host Harry and today we're going to be looking at this stunning BMW X6M. So the X6, you either love it or you hate it. And I'm not talking about the on-road performance because undoubtedly everyone sort of knows that this thing is an absolute beast with a 4.4 litre twin turbo V8 pushing out 567 horsepower and 750 newton meters of torque. It's no slouch. Now, when I say love it or hate it, I'm talking about the looks. And that is this coupe-like SUV body. Now, I know what you're probably thinking, Harry, what is the point of an X6? Why do we need this type of car? It's the size of an SUV, but the practicality of an everyday sort of passenger car. I don't mind it, I do like it. You know, if you've got a small dog or a small family, it isn't really too much of an inconvenience. You still get plenty of boot space in the back here, plenty of room for suitcases, and you can still put those rear seats down and fit plenty of luggage through there. Some other things I noticed on the rear of the X6, you get these lovely real exhaust pipes, quad tips, and they go straight through. There's no fake tips there. If you take a step back from the car as well, and this is what you see if you're following a vehicle like this, it has a super, super wide rear stance. The rear tires are absolutely massive. They're actually a 325 section rear tire. Absolutely huge. And that's gonna help the car perform on road with the handling and grip but it's gonna leave you a nasty bill when you're hitting up the tire shop for new tires. I really, really do love the styling of the F-Series generation of BMWs because nowadays they've just gone absolutely silly with their grills and lights. And I just think that this is a really timeless, classy sort of design. You get massive ducts all on the front of the car to cool the V8. You get this lovely, nice grille that isn't too big here in your face with the double spoked design on there, which is only on M vehicles. Oh, all right, guys. So let's talk a little bit about the interior of this vehicle. Now, nice and simple. It's the second generation of the X6 and this car was produced in 2016, so BMW were a little bit conservative on their styling of the interior, but everything's where you'd want it to be. It's super, super easy to use. Um, you get this lovely, nice little wheel down here to operate the iDrive system, which is one of the best in the game. It's also touchscreen if you prefer that. All the climate control settings are all nicely laid out in front of you here. You don't have to dig through a menu or screen like most modern cars. A couple of other little features you get in this car, because it is the M in the top of the range, is you get Harman Kardon sound system as standard, heads up display, full leather dash, and a sunroof, of course. Oh. Now, as it is sort of tradition now, I will step into the rear of this vehicle to show you what the headroom is like. Behind a seating position that I have my seat set to. Now, uh, yeah, sort of brings me back to the Aston Martin Repeat, if you saw that video. It is well appointed back here. You get two sets of speakers on either side of the doors and subs behind. Um, there's a lovely little armrest in here, but it is very compromised on headroom, but that's what you get if you like the styling of these vehicles. Welcome to lovely country Victoria. It is so good to be out here and just get out of the city for once in a while. First of all, this car is unreal out here. Uh, the X6M performs amazingly once you get out of the city confines and let the thing just breathe a little bit. Um, the first thing that you want to do when you get into any BMW M or M Sport car is you want to set it up properly because there are so many different modes to go through. So you've got the steering, suspension and engine. 
to start off with, you also then have three different modes to select from on the dual clutch gearbox, which by the way is extremely snappy in mode three. Now, there's a lot to go through there, but if you learn how to set the car up properly, you also have two different drive select buttons on the steering wheel. So you can set the car up exactly how you want for comfort day-to-day -day driving, and then on the M2 button, you can set that up for more spirited, sporty driving. So you can have everything set to sport in that mode, and that's how you're gonna get the best out of the car on roads like this. for a car that's well over two tons is just insane. You just pin it back, you get that lovely little upshift burp out of the exhaust pipes and the thing just hugs. You know, it actually just boggles my mind just how good these things can handle on such a tight, twisty road. You know, if you went back 10 years ago and you got in a SUV of the size of this and tried to push it along a road like this, you'd end up in the trees within two seconds, I can guarantee you that. There's like almost no body roll, you know. The wizards at the M Division over in Germany just know exactly what they're doing. And the way that it rolls through the gears is just instant. Absolutely instant. Now I mentioned earlier in the dealership as well that this car has a 325 section rear tyre which is larger than I think some GT3s and even Lamborghinis. They are huge rear tyres. Now like I said, very expensive tyres to replace but it just means that once you get out of the city, you know, maybe you're off to a farm, which is, you know, what this car's meant for, put some stuff in the back, get on roads like this, and it just allows you to just push like you're in uh, M3 almost. It hides its weight fantastically. Coming down this hill here, put a bit of steering input in, and you just get on the power out of the corner. performance steering wheel in this car is really, really nice. Um, it's got a great feel to it. You can really wrap your hands around it. And all the controls are exactly where you need them to be. It's not overly complicated. It's all there where you need it. It's got these nice big paddle shifters straight out of the M3 as well. Oh, just sounds so good. car just has so much grip. I feel as though like the X6 definitely appeals to a certain person. It's someone who wants the excitement of having a two-door sports car and the performance of a proper sports car, but with that commanding driving position that an SUV gives you. I wouldn't exactly say that you're compromising too much in driving pleasure, having this much weight and this type of body. But the benefit of that is that you get to sit up nice and high, you command the road, and you can fit your dog, some suitcases, and four passengers in there with you. Now back to the styling again. When the X6 came out, people were not a fan, but it has just taken over the car industry. Everyone loves SUVs, especially the coupe ones, because they just look so much cooler in my opinion. Yes, you may be losing out a bit of practicality, but with that, you get the wow factor. So I'm gonna try and convey to you just how quick this thing is from first gear, from a launch. And then I guess I'll see you back at the dealership because I'm just having too much fun with this car. Okay.
Thank you so much for watching this week's episode of the Friday Drive. As always, I hope to see you next week.